Welcome, tiny adventurers, to Grounded. As we begin to explore the upper yard, several new items become available to us, but we need to upgrade our axe to get access to them. The new items I'm talking about include splinters, burr weeds, lint, and pupa leather. Splinters are used to make some pretty strong arrows. Splinter arrows are basically about 50% stronger than regular arrows that you can craft, and they're significantly easier to craft than feather arrows. Burr weeds start to spawn around the yard after you've plugged the weed killer canister. They give weed stems like all other weeds, but they also drop spiky burrs, which are used to craft new kinds of floors as well as an explosive trap. Lint can be found on the doormat in front of the shed and in a few other places. By putting this through a spinning wheel, you make lint rope, which is used in a lot of new weapon and armor recipes. Pupa hides can only be broken up with an axe. And if you string some up on a jerky rack, you make pupa leather, which is also used in a lot of new weapon and armor recipes. In order to get any of these items, the first thing you're going to need is the termite axe. Termites can be found in the large wood pile to the far northwest of the yard. There's a few that roam outside, but a whole lot more if you venture deep inside the wood pile. Termite attack patterns and behaviors are incredibly similar to ants with a couple additions. Regular termites can shoot acid at you, similar to the bombardier beetle. Termite soldiers have a move where they fling dust at you. The dust cloud slows down your attack speed, so don't stand in it. If you've studied your entomology, or have googled termites before coming here, then you'll know that termites are usually born without eyes. In this game, the other insects let you know you've aggroed them when their eyes turn red. This can also be useful in the dark if you can't see them well. If you try to fight termites in the dark, you might have a hard time telling where they are or how many are attacking you because you won't see any red eyes here. Since the creatures in the upper yard are more difficult, and we're going to be fighting a lot of them, we should consider what kinds of weapons they're weak to in order to kill them faster and easier. According to their creature card, they're weak to stabbing and salty. Stabbing includes arrows, spears, and the mosquito needle. Salty is an advanced upgrade you can apply to your weapons using a salt glob, but that can be a little expensive to make. We could craft some salt arrows, which means bow damage will have twice the advantage. We can also craft the Salt Morning Star, which is a great weapon for stunning termites. If you're only going to kill a couple of termites for the axe, then you don't have to do any of this. Making weapons tailored to certain encounters can be expensive. However, if you want to get through the entire termite den, then these items can help speed things up. To get what you need to craft the termite axe, you don't actually have to go that deep into the wood pile. By killing a few termite soldiers, you should be able to get the two termite chompers you need to craft the axe. In fact, if you're watching this video just to learn how to craft the axe, then we're already done. However, why stop there? there's still more loot to discover, and if you want access to the magic staffs in this game, you're going to have to explore deeper. In order to complete this place, you'll actually need to craft the termite axe first to unlock the last room. Go back to base and finish crafting the axe, then come back here later. Before we get too deep into the termite den, let's talk about the lighting in here for a bit. The wood pile can be an incredibly dark place, and I already mentioned that the lack of glowing red eyes is going to make termites a little harder to fight in the dark. If you want to use a two-handed weapon for combat, you should bring a firefly headlamp. If you equip it, it'll lighten up the area for you and free up both your hands. It also lasts quite a long time before needing to be repaired. Another option is to just head to the termite den in the morning and probably raise the gamma settings for your game a little bit. In my case, I was getting used to fighting termites using my salt morning star in one hand and a torch in the other, so this works for me. The termite den has several entrances, 
but it's hardly what you would call a maze. The two entrances at the bottom and the front simply lead to each other. Clearing out that path is a good starting point when you're crafting the axe. There are two more entrances higher up that are a bit more challenging to get to. They also lead to each other, but they also lead you onto another path that goes much deeper into the termite den. There is going to be a lot of termites to deal with here. They are much easier to fight alone, and if you're not careful, you might get swarmed. Keep trying to pull them one by one until you get deeper into the den. If you keep exploring, you'll eventually discover a big room with a massive amount of termites, and a light source in the back coming from the ceiling. It's going to take a while, but clearing out this room will open the way ahead. Once the room is cleared, three new paths will open up to you. The path to your right leads to a fifth entrance into the termite den from the top of the woodpile. It's not a very useful entrance in the beginning until this room is cleared out, and there are lots of mosquitoes and wolf spiders right outside. It was however useful when I had to run back and repair my gear, it was basically a shortcut back into this room. The path to your left leads to a milk molar and a scabby. There aren't any enemies down that path, it's just a reward for making it this far. The path straight ahead will lead you to the Termite King and one of Burgle's auxiliary chips. However, it's blocked by splinters. If you remember to craft the new Termite Axe before coming in here, you can clear the splinters and head down this way. The Termite King is very large, but it's only dangerous if you're not careful. New one for the beast, Jerry. Always make sure to clear out the other termites in the room before engaging. The Termite King itself has the same attacks as the other termites, but they don't have any acid or dirt attacks to worry about. Instead, its main feature is that its attacks deal an incredibly powerful stun. Every attack blocked with your shield will knock you down. You should be fine though, it doesn't really have any follow-up attacks to that. One strategy you can try is to always back up a little bit during its attacks. If you move back even just a little bit, you can get out of range and you won't have to worry about blocking or parrying. Upon defeat, you'll find the Woodpile Burgle Chip, which teaches you how to craft the Wizard Hat and the Three Magic Staffs. There's also a Mega Milk Molar at the back as well. Magic Staffs are pretty late game, so it may take you a while to unlock everything you need to craft them, but at least they're now available to you. That about covers everything you need to know about the Termite Den in the Woodpile. You now have a termite axe, which gives you access to all sorts of new items, which allows you to craft better weapons and armor. Next time, we're going to upgrade our busting tool to tier 3 and make the black ox hammer. I'll see you next time.